All right, so in this video, I'm going to extend what we've done in the previous ones and add scope by using a score element, a player score, and I will be showing XML comments, two very valuable things to understand and be, to be able to use in your code. So to start that out, I am inside of my Hello Me program that we were using from the previous applications, or from the previous tests, and what I'm doing over here is, let's see, We've got the Form1CS where we're working in the code. I just want to point this out. Form1CS is over here. If I double-click it, it should show me the UI designer. And if I double-click on anything in it, it should sh take me to the code. I could also just right-click on this and say View Code, or right-click on this and say View Designer for Form1. Uh, so what I want is to be in the designer. And over in the toolbox, I want to add a couple of buttons. So I'm going to add one button just double click on it. I'm going to move it to where I want it and then I hit control C V. I held control and then tapped C and then V and that copied and pasted the new button. Now I don't want to double click on either of these buttons. Instead what I want to do is set their names which is something we haven't been doing. Before I double click on any of these or change that I want to show you the other stuff. The button for next that was from a previous code showing us how to use a for next statement. This one was doing a for next minus minus. That makes a lot of sense as to what we're going to click on when we click on it or when we double click on it. So I'm going to double click on for next. Takes us to the code. Now inside of here it says its method name is button one underscore click. That doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't say it's using a for next. I mean we can look inside of here and we see it's using a for next. But we don't exactly know that was the purpose of what this was for. Same thing with the other button. It's button 2 underscore click. We're going to make our code more obvious. We're going to do that by clicking once on button 3 and in the properties window, and if you don't have a properties window, you can always right click on, but on button 3 and go to properties. Now by default it takes you to text. Let's set the text to add score. There is a space. Now I'm going to click once on button 4, and on this one I'm going to call it show score, <clears throat> also with a space. Now I clicked once again, and I didn't double click on any of these again. I don't want to take it into the code. You'll notice if I double click on 4 next, it takes me into the method, and those other, control those other buttons don't have methods yet. Those methods get created the first time that you happen to double click on one of the buttons. And it gets created based on its name. So I only clicked once to select add score, scrolled up to the top, and I found the name. Scroll up to the top of properties where I found parentheses name close parentheses. It's called button 3. Let's change it to add score. I can hit enter to end that line, or to end that. And then I'll click once on show here. And you'll notice in the properties window, it's still up in the same area. You can just start typing show score without having to have selected the properties window or clicked on it. Just because of the fact that the last thing that you had selected also had a name on it. <clears throat> All right, so our new button names. Watch what happens when I click add score now, or double click on it. I get private void add score add score underscore click. That is far more obvious to what its purpose is than button 2 underscore click. So now let's actually use it. To start out with, the purpose of this is I want a score for the user. I want a way that they've just done something that they get a score. The score has increased. And then I want to be able to display what that score is. So first off, I'll just start with a variable like we've used before. An integer. Int score, all lowercase, equals zero. It'll start out at zero. Then I need to add 50 to it. I'm going to say score equals score plus 50. All right, now let's go back into the designer. By the way, I'm going to show you this in a way that doesn't work first, and then I'll show you how to make it work. I, want, I, I think it'll help explain the difference between the two. All right, so next I'm going to go to the show score button, and let's double click on it. I double click on this one and I'm going to start out by I want to display the score. You'll note we have this score variable up here, int score. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 
message box dot show and inside of it it wants to string text which I'm going to do some concatenation here like we did with the names in our console app earlier. I'm going to say your score is and then add the score to it. Now wait a second, IntelliSense doesn't have a thing in here on it. It, says it has the add score button, it has the add score underscore click method, which is this method. It has the show score button and it has this method our, that we're in right now. Score itself does not exist. If I go up to here and I type in score, score exists. It knows it exists. Okay, so the problem with that must be that we don't have a score variable in here. So all right, I'll say int score equals zero. So we started out with a score. In fact, I won't even set this one. You don't actually have to set variables when you create them, but it's strongly recommended. Uh, okay, so score, now it should have a local score. And I'm gonna close the parentheses on this in a semicolon. Oh, on the sign, it's not used, so I need to set it to zero in this case. All right, so your score is, and it will show the score. Now let's try out the code and see what happens. It'll be broken, but it will do something. All right, so I'm gonna click and show the score to begin with. Zero, that's what we expected. I click to add score. All right, now technically I should see a boost of 50 here. So I click show score and I don't. It's still at zero. I click add score, add score a whole bunch of times. I click show score, score is still zero. The reason for that is because as soon as you step outside of a set of curly braces, any variables that were created inside of those curly braces are gone. They're gone from memory. They aren't in use anymore. So that means that this method down here, this show score click, doesn't actually have an int score to begin with. That's why I couldn't see it when it wasn't here. So what I need is to make score usable in both of these. There's a really easy way to do that. I deleted the score that I had inside of this one, and I'm just going to take the score from add score click, this first one, control X. That just deletes it. You can also just delete it. You can see I get a little red underscore saying score doesn't exist in the current context that happens in both of these because score wasn't created at all. What I'm going to do is remember what I said about the brackets. As soon as you get to a variable declared outside of these brackets, nothing else can see it. All of these brackets, all of these methods are inside of what's called the class. The class has its own set of curly braces and you can also put variables inside of there where I can say int score equals zero. Now when I scroll back down both of these have a score. They have the score variable. So if I hit play, let's try that. I'm going to hit add score, show score. I have 50. Oh, that helps if I move this over here. <laughs> I'm going to actually just close this and then let's hit play. Drag the form over. I will click show score. I have zero points. Add score, show score. 50 points. I'm going to click add score a bunch of times. Click show score again. Now I have 500 points. Add score once more, show 550. All right, you get the idea. So what's happening is this score is taking the variable every single time, but the variable exists outside of the method. So when it ends the method, score still exists. And these are both using the same thing. Now I want to show you one other shortcut. I could over here say plus equals 50 instead of score equals score plus 50. It actually means the exact same thing. Plus equals, because this line type of line where you're just incrementing or decrementing something so often, or happens so often in the code, they've made shortcuts for it. So we don't have to write this out. We can just say score plus equals 50. It makes it shorter and easier. And if you're deleting stuff, make sure you don't get rid of these little curly braces at the end. They're important. All right, and I'll play the code just to make sure it still works. Drag this over, show score, zero at score once, show score again, my score is 50. All right. Oh, well, uh, one other thing. Let's get into XML commenting. So right now, when I click, when I move my mouse over score, it says int form1.score. 
you can see that that's where it's telling you where the score integer exists and also tells you that it's an integer. But if I click, if I had a console, don't copy this part of the code, I'm going to get rid of it in a second. Console, look at all the extra information console gets. Well, you might say, well, that's a class, not an integer. But that's not the case. There's a lot more here. If I said uh, int a equals 5, I could say a, and IntelliSense just tells me int a. It doesn't give me any extra details about it. I would like score to have some more information. So I'm going to scroll up to the top where we've created it. Now, I'll tell you this. What I'm about to show you does not work inside of methods. It will not work inside of here, for instance. It will work above a method. It will work above a class the, or, and a variable in a class. So we're going to use it right here on this variable. We're going, to, we're going to use a commenting format called XML comments. We'll start with two slashes. Two slashes are what we've used for comments before. Uh, this does not get executed. Okay, so comments don't get run. But that still, if I go down here to score, score still doesn't give us any extra information. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to get rid of this line. So I have my two slashes. I'm going to add a third one. All of a sudden, it added summary tags to it. So I have this whole summary information I can use. And what happens there is I can say things like, this is the player's score. All right, so this is the player's score. Now, IntelliSense gets all that extra information. I can see this is the player's score from IntelliSense. It says the same thing down here. Anytime I'm starting to type it in, score IntelliSense shows me this information. So that's really valuable. That's one of the best things because the ordinary comments, in order to figure out what's going on, what the comments are saying, you have to go back to that exact point in the code where the comment was placed. In this case, all you have to do is start typing in the part of the command or the part of the object or the part of the form or variable that you want to use, and it will tell you. Now, I'll show you one other thing here. If I were to say int a equals 5 and try to put the slashes over it, I can put the two and still put a comment to explain this. But if I put a third one, nothing happens. It did not create the summary tags for me. And even if I do manually copy and paste those, they don't do anything here. Those are only for outside of the methods. And we'll get into more reasons why on that later when we get into objects and OOP programming. All right.